Okay, last time we started descriptive statistics. So from today, we're going to learn the logic of hypothesis testing. So the hypothesis testing normally is a difficult part of a statistic, but once you know the logic of hypothesis testing, the things will become easier because all of the hypothesis testing will follow the same logic. Okay, so you already work on this example as a group. Now I'm going to, this example will show you the using your common sense to understand the logic of hypothesis testing. So we are going to using this example and to, at the end you would know, then we'll summarize to the, uh, the, the, the hypothesis testing procedure so you would know um, this whole whole process. Now, for now, using this example, just use your common sense, okay? All right, so I'm going to ask each of you, give me the answer for this example from question A until I, okay? So from this side, okay, this, well, can you also read the question? The, from the beginning, the example, and read the question, and give me the answer, please. Okay, a common test for extra sensory perception asks subjects to identify which of four shapes, star, circle, wave, or square, appears on a card unseen by the subject. Consider a test of 100 cards. Part A. If subject Fred is just guessing on each card, what proportion would he get right in the long run? We said 25 out of 100. Okay, great. 25 percent or we'll say 0.25 okay number because it's a one out of four right because the four possible choices then you choose one so it's just random guessing you get a one out of four right okay Lisa question B please okay if Fred takes a test consisting of n equals 100 cards and guesses on each card will he necessarily get exactly 25 correct we said no, he will not necessarily get the 25 cards correct. Yes, using our common sense. <clears throat> if you keep guessing 100 cards and you have four choices, you may not exactly get 25 correct, right? Sometimes you get a little less, sometimes you get a little more, right? Yes, okay, number C, uh, Candy, please. If Fred identifies 28 cards correctly, is it possible that he was just guessing and got a little lucky? Yes. Yes, possible, yes, because he has a roughly 25% chance to get it right, <clears throat> and he gets 28, it's just a little lucky, right, get a little more than 25, yes. Uh, number D, Julie, please. If subject Wilma identifies 37 cards correctly, is it possible that she was just guessing and got lucky? No. No? Okay, because it's too lucky, right? <laughs> 37 out of uh, 100 she got right, and then she only have about a quarter per, uh, chance to, to get it right. So 37 is a little too lucky, right? Great. Okay, number E, Aja. With which of these two subjects would you be more convinced that the subject does better than just guessing Fred? Right? right? <laughs> William? Compared to Fred and Wilma, okay, Wilma got 37 cards correct. Fred got 28 cards correct. So which one has a better chance than just guessing? Any other one? We said uh, Wilma and Betty were the two that had a, that we were more convinced. Were Wilma, right? Betty. Wilma, compare Wilma and Fred, right? So far, number E, Wilma. We only have two subjects for now. Wilma and Fred. Fred got 28 cards correct, and Wilma got 37 cards correct. With the, using our common sense, we would say probably Wilma does better than just guessing, right? Okay, great. So number F, Sue. Suppose for now that Fred is just guessing if one were to repeatedly give him tests of 100 cards, how would the sim how would the sample proportion of his correct answer vary? Um, the 
normal distribution? Yes. If we repeatedly giving him a uh, hundred cars like every day, this morning when I see him, I give him a hundred cars. Okay, let's guess which car is this the ship. Okay. Then um, next day I give him a uh, hundred cars. And then I give him a, f and then every day I'm um, uh, going on and on and on until like a whole year. Okay. Then the distribution would be like a, this normal distribution, right? Okay, with uh, uh, what kind of uh, the mean score is? Yes, 0.25. Okay, because he was just guessing. Okay, he has a one out of four chances to guess right. So what the all the number he guessed will be around this 25 out of 100, right? So this would be the mean of the distribution. And the statistician already calculated the standard deviation for this normal distribution using this formula. Theta 1 minus theta divided by n. So in this case, the theta is 0.25. The n is 100. So I already calculated, which is 0.25 times 1 minus 0.25 divided by 100 and equal to 0 0.0433, okay? All right, so we will learn this more later, but for now, I want you just to learn the logic of hypothesis testing. We focus on not the computation, computation part, but focus on the logic part, okay? Okay, next question is G. Um, Lisa, uh, uh, Liz, please. The probability is about 0.2442 of Fred getting 28 or more correct if he is just guessing. Based on this probability, would it be very surprising to get a sample proportion of correct answers as high as 0.28 if the population proportion is 0.25? We said no, since they're close. Uh, in right, not surprised. As we said, it's possible because he has 25% chance to get it right. And now we know he got 28. So it's not surprises. He could be a little lucky, got 28%, right? Great. Okay, um, Lisa, number H. The probability is about 0 0.0028 of Wilma getting 37 or more correct if she is just guessing. Based on this probability, would it be very surprising to get a sample proportion of correct answers as high as 0.37 if the population proportion equals 0.25? Uh, we said yes because there's a greater distance between the 0.25 and the 0.37. Yes, yes, because of 0.37, and the, we know the statistician already calculated it the probability for Wilma to get 37 cars correct, okay, is only 0 0.0028. Basically, that means if you gave her 100 cars every day for a thousand days, and she only, have a, she only, well, only has about three days to get 37 cars or more correct. So this probability point point zero zero two eight means that about three out of a thousand, right? So that means he's too lucky. I mean, she's too lucky, right? Okay, great. So the next question is number I. Uh, we go around to complete this table, then each person complete the one column, okay? Uh, next person is Candy. The following table presents four possible sample outcomes. Fill in the missing sample proportions and indicate in the last column how convinced you would be that the subject does better than just guessing. And uh, that would be more than 25% correct in the long run. Not convinced, somewhat convinced, convinced, or strongly convinced as the answer choices. So with subject Fred with 28 answers correct, and a probability of just guessing of 0.2442, uh, my belief that he is doing better than guessing, I'm not convinced. Okay, good, great. You all agree with Candy's answer? Great. 
Judy, please. For subject Barney, with the sample number of correct answers is 31, and the probability of doing so well by just guessing is 0 0.0829, my belief that more than 0.25% or that is better than guessing is somewhat convinced. Good. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, Aja. For Betty, it's uh, convinced. Okay, Betty got the 34 cards correct. Okay, so you all convinced? She might be doing better than just guessing. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Sue. For Wilma, got 37 of correct answer and probability of doing so well by just guessing is 0 0.0025, 0 0.8 and it's strongly convinced that he do better than guessing. Okay, great. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for Fred, he got 28 cards correct. You're not convinced that he's doing better than just guessing. For Barney, he, he got 31 cards correct. So you're somewhat convinced that he's doing better than just guessing. And for Betty, she got 38, uh, 34 cards correct. So you are convinced that she's doing better than just guessing. And for Wilma, she, does, she got 37 cards correct. So you are strongly convinced that she does better than just guessing. Okay, all right. Now, let me put this here on this normal distribution so you can have a better sense about this, the decision you made it. Let me erase this so you can see this part better. So Fred is here, right? He got 28 cards correct. So the proportion for Fred got the cards correct is 0.28, okay? So statistician already calculated for you this part. For Fred, if he's just guessing, because this whole normal distribution is for the population without the ESP. So just guessing, right? So if Fred without ESP, just guessing, he got 28 cards correct, the probability for him to got the 28 cards correct is 0.2442, okay? Then we know for Barney, let me write down Barney here. For Barney, he got a 31 cards correct, so he's here. Right, 31 cars correct. So the proportion for him to got the cars correct is 31%, 0.31. Okay, if Barney is just guessing without any ESP, okay, then this, based on this distribution, so that means if he's just guessing, he should belong to this population with this distribution, right? The statistician already calculated for Barney in their sheet, already indicated for Barney without ESP, just guessing, the probability for him to get 31 cards correct is what percentage? What, what probability? 0.0829. Okay, this is the Barney. Okay. Then for uh, Betty, Betty just uh, got the 34 cards correct. Okay, so she's here. 34 cards correct. Without guessing, I mean without ESP, just guessing, for Betty to get the 34 cards correct, the statistician calculated the probability for Betty got 34 cards correct without ESP is equal to 0.0188. Okay? So now the last one, Wilma. Wilma got 37 cards correct. So she's here, 37 cards correct. If Wilma suppose Okay, we hypothesize 
If a warm-up has no ESP, just guess it. Got 37 cars crack. Okay? On this distribution for the population without ESP, Walmart got 37 cars crack. The probability for Walmart got 37 cars or more crack is we calculated is equal to 0.0028. Okay, now let's look at these four persons. You told me for this whole distribution is for the population without ESP, just guessing. Okay, so without ESP, just guessing, one out of four cars crack is their mean is 0.25. Okay, one out of four. Okay, for Fred, he got the 28 cars crack. You told me you're not convinced he does better than just guessing. Okay? And for uh, next one, Barney. Barney got 31 cars crack. You told me, so you're some, somehow, somewhat convinced he does better than just guessing, but not really convinced, right? Okay, for Betty, she got 34 cars cracked. Okay, and the, your answer is that you are convinced Betty does better than just guessing. So she should have some sort of ESP, right? Okay, for Wilma, you, your answer is strongly convinced Wilma has ESP. She does better than just guessing. Okay, from Fred 28 to Wilma 37, you not convinced to the strongly convinced. So this is a change, right? So at some point, you change from not convinced to convinced. Where did you make this change? Using your common sense, where did you make this change? Fred, now comments. Wilma, you comments. Where did you make the change? Between Barney and Betty? Yes, between Barney and Betty, here. You draw a cutoff line here, right? This side, you're not convinced they're doing better than just guessing. This side, you are convinced they're doing better than just guessing. The more goes here, the further goes this side, the stronger you believe they're doing better than just guessing, right? Okay, so here is a line. Using your common sense, you draw a line here. In your mind, you had a line. You just probably did not recognize then what this line is, it is. The probability here for Fred is 0.2442. For Barney is 0.0829. For Betty is 0.0188. For Walmart is 0.0028. What is this line? The probability for this line. say something? Point zero zero five. Point zero five. Zero five. Right? This for Barney is a point zero eight two nine. For Betty is a point zero one eight eight. And from this side to, to from here to here, you change from not commence to commence. So here is a point zero five. This is called a significance level. Alpha equal to 0 0.05. As always, uh, we use, uh, when we do statistic test, we always say we use alpha 0 0.05 significance level. I set up a significance level is a 0 0.05. This is from your common sense. So the whole procedure, let me do this, and this hypothesis testing, then you will see the whole hypothesis testing 
is based on your common sense. Okay, let me put this here. In the hypothesis testing,
And now you, you can use SPSS to calculate it for you. So we will teach this later on. Okay, the probability associated with the FRED, this, uh, this score is a 0 0.693 already gave to you is a 0 0.2442. Okay, before we make a decision whether FRED belongs to this population or not, we need to compare FRED probability with our preset cutoff rule, right? Alpha go 0 0.05. Okay, so it's a 2, 0.2442 larger than alpha, right? So it's here. The likelihood for Fred to belong to this population is larger than the cutoff point we selected. Remember we said if uh, we, we have this in our mind as a cutoff points. Okay, if the likelihood from this side to this side we change from not convinced to convinced. So which means if the likelihood for this larger than our cutoff point, what do we say? Accept the null hypothesis. Yeah, accept the null hypothesis. Why do we set up a null hypothesis? Because it's greater than 0 0.05. Yes, it's greater than our the probability for Fred to belong to this population is greater than our bottom line, right? So then we make a decision. We said, yes, we accept non-hypothesis. What is non-hypothesis? The non-hypothesis is the people who have no ESP. The population for the people who have no ESP. Okay, so then the step six, the last steps, we draw conclusion. What is the conclusion? Make a decision, reject, and we already make a decision. What, what's our conclusion? Red belongs to a population, to the population. without ESP. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we do Wilma. Let's do Wilma. Then I hope from these two ends it will help you to learn this. For Wilma, we do this. The non-hypothesis will be the same because we just select another sample. The non-hypothesis will be we hypothesize a population without the ESP, which means the theta is equal to 0.25. The alternative hypothesis is yes, people have ESP, right? So the theta is larger than 0.25. Then we select our Rule. What is our rule? Equal 0 0.05. Then this time we select sample, calculate the sample statistics. The, our sample is Wilma this time. So the Wilma, she got 37 cars correct, right? Sample statistic minus the mean, we calculate this score divided by the standard deviation, Wilma is equal to two point something I calculated. Two point seven seven one. Okay, so the next step is refer to a criterion for evaluate the sample evidence. The criterion we know the uh, probability for Wilma to get 37 cars correct based on the sample statistics for 2.771. Basically, this is Wilma is 
2.771 is standard deviation above the mean. Okay, so like nearly three standard deviation above the mean. So the probability we already calculated is 0 0.0028. So then we need to refer to a criterion. What is our criterion? 0 0.05. So then we know this is a less than alpha. Right? What do we say? You reject. You reject. Why do we reject? Smaller than the, the yes, 0 .5. the chance for Wilma to belong to this hypothesized population is smaller than our criterion. That's why we reject it. Because the chance for Wilma to belong to this population is so, so small. Our conclusion is that Wilma does not belong to this population. Because the chance, the likelihood for her to belong to this population is too small to be accepted, right? So that is, is our conclusion. Wilma does not belong to the population. without the ESP. So basically, the conclusion is uh, Wilma does better than just guessing. She has ESP. She's not randomly guessing the number. OK, the next step is I'm going to have you do this six steps for Barney and Betty, OK, as an exercise. Then you do this, then we'll compare the answers. Okay?